Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Camel, but more excitingly, welcome back to Doom Eternal. Now, for someone outside of Eden Bethesda, I've played more than my fair share of Doom Eternal. Across E3, QuakeCon, Gamescom, and PAX Australia, I've played Doom Eternal for about 10 hours. Now, that 10 hours that I've played was of the same demo build, and that build was just fragments of one level. However, Along with that, I've just had another three hours of hands-on gameplay with a full build of the game, starting from the very start and finishing on the third level, as that's as far as we were allowed to go. Now across that three hours of gameplay, I could capture one hour of footage, and from that one hour of footage, I can show you 15 minutes, all of which I've cut up into juicy chunks, and that's what you'll be seeing here in this video. Most of this footage is from the third level. Now I've spoken about Doom Eternal before, and with high praise. And after playing this final build, my stance has not changed at all, but only been fortified. I will say, however, as someone who is foaming at the mouth to play more Doom Eternal, it is almost overwhelming to play. The key word being almost. I'm gonna say this a lot, it's a very intense game. Bethesda ANZ literally brought in a dog into their office so that people could pat it to help them calm down during and after playing Doom Eternal. They brought in a comfort animal. Why? Because this game is very intense. Doom 2016 felt like a breath of fresh air, and at the time, it was. But man, Doom Eternal makes 2016 feel beige and boring. I love Doom 2016, and I'm sure you did too if you're watching this video. And Hugo Martin said after you play Doom Eternal that you won't be able to play Doom 2016 again. You can't go back. And that's a pretty intense thing to say, but it's true. This thing is terrifyingly turbocharged. It's demonically psychedelic. It's aggressively satisfying, and all around, it's just quite simply intense. The combat is hyper-polished. Every enemy has a weakness, every enemy has a strength. They all have their own mechanics and their own tactics, and they all have their own unique abilities, and they are smart, and every single enemy type can kill you very quickly if you approach them incorrectly. Every weapon has a specific purpose, a specific way to deal with a specific demon. In Doom 2016, there was a number of weapons that I never really used, and a number of weapon modifications that I never felt like I had to use. You know, I stuck with the same two or three weapons and got through the game that way. Well, in Doom Eternal, these demonic chess pieces are so polished and so well balanced and tactically unique that you will be weapon changing, you will be mod swapping, you will be monkey bar swinging, grenade launching, teleporting, flame throwing, meat hooking, double jumping, dashing, dodging, blood punching, glory killing, all within about 5 seconds. You have to. And if you stop to blink, your health bar is going to know about it. You need to be switched on to play this game. It's a thinking man's action game. It's ridiculous and it's over the top and it's challenging but it's so satisfying. The combat is aggressive, the music is aggressive, the art style is aggressive, the worldscape is aggressive. Everywhere you look, something truly insane is happening. There's planets shattering above you, there's continent-sized demon starships filling the sky, there's titans battling in the background, there's blood, gore, hell. It's just really, really is so insane. But again, with all this praise, I will openly and honestly say, it's almost, almost being the keyword, it's almost overwhelming. There was about three times during the play session where I just paused the game and stood up for a minute and walked away just so I could lean on a wall and breathe. I'm just standing there like, bloody hell, Jesus Christ. Man, that was me after pausing the game several times while I stood there patting a dog. So Doom Eternal is really crazy. Now watching gameplay is one thing and I get that it doesn't translate fully what I'm saying but boy oh boy, I was sweating while playing this game. I almost find it hard to talk about in a tangible or well-constructed manner. I can only conjure these fragments of emotion and descriptors. You know, like uh, it's a video game and it feels like a video game. It's bright and colorful, but it's also dark and demonic and it's such a sensory overload. The combat's like a puzzle game. There's also a dance you need to do during combat and if you don't swivel that heel and bob to the beat, you're gonna be demon dinner. You're engaged all the time. It's also a power fantasy, but it's not handed to you. It's earned, you have to earn that power fantasy. And you will die, and you will know exactly why you died and how you died, and it will be your fault. 
and you'll come back with a vehement vengeance. Now, while obviously the combat is off the wall, the environment is also aggressive and, more importantly, engaging. Whether it be lakes of lava, rooms full of toxic waste, electrified floors, pools of plasma, purple goo that doesn't let you run, jump, or dash, flaming spinning chains, fire shooting out of the walls, tentacles bursting from the floor, energy balls being fired down hallways from turrets, monkey bars to swing off, launch pads, floors that drop when you stand on them, spikes thrusting from the walls, axes swinging in hallways, buttons to shoot, gates to open, keys to collect, mines to blow up, levers to pull, pads to punch, platforms to leap between, Walls to climb, walls to break, teleporters, blocks to punch, chains to smash, barrels to explode, water to swim through, launch pads to fly from. The point is, going from point A to point B is no cakewalk. It's always a traversal puzzle. You gotta be switched on and ready for anything. Now all of these elements render the exploration as surprisingly engaging. It's not as intense as the combat obviously, but the thinking power required is on about the same level. There was about three points during the playtime where I genuinely had to stop and be like, how do I get to the next bit? And you have to look around and see, you know, there's a climbing wall there, there's a launch pad there, there's a swing bar there. How do I combine these things to get to where I need to go? You know, there isn't just a hallway with a green light. You gotta actually think and traversally, it's a puzzle that you have to solve, just like the puzzle of combat. Like here, for example, I have to punch this pad which raises a monkey bar. I've got about five seconds to get to the other side of it so I can jump onto it, swing off, dash onto this wall, covered in traps, by the way, spin around, double jump across to this platform, jump up onto this hanging block, turn around, and then jump and dash onto this platform. And it all makes sense now that you've seen it, but once you finish the battle in that arena and you're stuck with these, you know, there's a button, there's a bar, there's a climbing wall there, how do I get to the top? And you gotta to figure it out. And just like the chess game of combat, solving these environmental puzzles is just as satisfying. And beyond that, the secrets are so goddamn fulfilling to find and figure out. I'll have some footage at the end of a secret I found. It's just a good example where you can actually see me figuring out how to solve it and reap the rewards of the hidden areas. Now, I don't really care about this at all, but in my last video about Doom Eternal, a lot of people had concerns in regards to the HUD and the items in the environment looking unimmersive and arcadey. Firstly, the HUD, there is a ton of HUD options, so you can do whatever you want with that if you don't like the default settings. And secondly, the items in the world looking very video gamey or arcadey. Now, both the HUD being bright and colorful and all these items being big, bright and colorful and floating in the air and stuff like that, it's a necessary visual cue. If the ammunition was tiny little ammo boxes on the ground in realistic looking containers, you would never see them. This game is so visually assaulting and fast and busy if it ain't big and bright and in your face, you really just won't notice it. These design choices are necessary, and I actually like them a lot. Now, the only complaints slash bugs slash feedback I have for any dev who's potentially watching this, a few times my glory kills didn't activate, the enemy would be standing there flashing, and I'd walk up to them and hit the button to do a glory kill, but it would just punch them with a melee attack rather than performing the glory kill. There was also one climb wall that I just couldn't grab onto and I kept falling to my death. Now the reason I'm calling that a bug is because it only happened on one wall and it was like four times in a row. And I didn't have that issue with any other climb wall. There was also one monkey bar that I could not grab onto, which resulted in my death again. And I also only had this issue on the one monkey bar multiple times. This is more of a personal thing, but the chainsaw I feel like doesn't make enough noise. It sounds really quiet, and especially for such a special glory weapon in such an over-exaggerated, ridiculous game, I want the chainsaw to feel like it's got a V8 engine powering it. I don't want some soft squishy noise. And the only real design complaint is on the Doom Slayer's base. It's the hub you go to between levels, known as the Doom Fortress. Now there are these doors between rooms where you have to walk up to it and then it slides up into the roof and then you can walk forward. To me, these serve no purpose other than to slow you down for no reason. I think they shouldn't be there at all. Now some of the doors are locked and you can unlock them through various means or stages in the missions, but I feel like once you've done that, once you've unlocked the door, I think the door should just stay up. If you want to zip around and fly around your base, you know, running through 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rooms at a time, you gotta bump into these see-through closed doors and have to stand there for a second and wait for it to open each time. And looking at the footage and comparing it to my malice for these doors makes it seem ridiculous, I know, but I came away from that three hour experience with so much awesome gameplay and the thoughts about the game, but I couldn't stop thinking about these stupid doors. It just felt like traversal cuckery, and you know, once they're unlocked, they serve no purpose other than to be waited upon and bumped into and slow you down for again no reason. So hopefully someone at id can change that. <laughs> It just, it's so silly. But apart from those super picky things and those few bugs, I have no complaints. Anyway, enough of me babbling. Here is the rest of the footage and you can just chill out and watch and get a better vibe for the game. I both feel like I'm still recovering from playing it, but also entirely addicted to it and I cannot wait to play more of it. So we'll see more soon, hopefully. But until then, I've been Camel and I hope you enjoy Doom Eternal. Somewhere. 